Welcome to Absolute Trust Talk with your host, Kirsten Howe. Absolute Trust Talk brings you tips, tools, advice, and interviews to help you build a reliable knowledge base on estate planning, business, and finance to start preparing for your future today. Hello, and welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. I'm Kirsten Howe, Managing Attorney here at Absolute Trust Council. And we're happy to have you back again. With me here is Jessica Colbert, who's one of our associate attorneys. In our last episode, we started with the premise that we had four questions that we think trustees need to ask before they make the final distributions to their beneficiaries. And in our last episode, we managed to cover three of them. That's pretty good, (laughs) but we ran out of time. And so now we're gonna cover the fourth one. And just to refresh you in case you've forgotten or anybody who didn't see the last episode, what we have been experiencing recently is a little cluster of trustees who come to us after they've been administering a trust for a, quite a period of time. Their grantor died and now they're the trustee and they've done pretty well, but they missed some things. And so they come to us and they discover that they've missed some things. And so these are the four questions we would love every trustee to just ask before making final distributions. Here we're on question number four, which is really, a, it's not fair to call it a question number four because it's such a catch-all question. It's, have I done everything I'm required to do? As a trustee, have I done everything I'm required to do? And that does cover obviously a lot of territory, but we see commonly in these situations where the trustee has been working without an attorney and then they come and talk to us, there are certain notices that they are required to send out and they haven't done it. A lot of trust administration is kind of common sense, but this kind of a thing, you're required to give these notices. That's not common sense. You just have to know it. Somebody has to tell you this is what you're required to do. So we're going to talk about the common notices that trustees overlook, but they are required to give. So Jessica, why don't you start with the first one? The first one is a written notice that goes to the trust beneficiaries and the decedent's heirs. And it is a written notice that has very specific language requirements. And the purpose of this notice is to let the recipients know that the person has died, that they had a trust, and that these recipients are entitled to a copy of the trust, and that they have 120 days to contest the terms of that trust. Once the 120 days passes, our trustee can you know, move on, proceed with administering the trust, knowing that it can't be challenged by someone down the road. Right. And it's not at all uncommon for trustees to come at what they consider to be the end of their trust administration and discover, oh, I didn't do that. And I'm required to do that. And it's in my best interest to do that. The purpose of that 120 day limitation on contests is to protect the trustee. Once that 120 days passes, they know absolutely that this is a valid trust and I can follow it. And anything I do that's consistent with this trust is valid. So you want that not at the end. (laughs) You want to get that out of the way at the beginning. And so they come to us at the end and we've still got to do that because there's, that's the only way we can protect our client who is the trustee. Okay. The other thing, Jessica, you mentioned, it goes to the trust beneficiaries and the heirs. So talk about that. Yeah, so the trust beneficiaries may be a certain set of people, but in addition to those people getting the notice, so would the decedent's heirs. And these are determined by law. So it may be, let's say that the decedent had three children and left everything to two of them. Those two would be the trust beneficiaries. However, the third child is still an heir of the decedent. And so that person, even though they are not getting anything from the trust, would still have to get this notice. Right. And even if their name isn't in the trust and and that's possible, although usually when you disinherit a child, you specifically (laughs) say that in the trust. So it's important to know because we have people who they may leave everything to a charity. So the charity is the trust beneficiary, but they do have heirs at law out there who aren't mentioned anywhere in the trust. And those people are entitled to be notified. And if they aren't notified, and they come back later and complain after all the money's gone, who's holding the bag now? Yeah, our trustee. Okay, so the other notices that we commonly see trustees didn't know about, Jessica, go ahead and lay that one out for us. One that most trustees don't realize they need to do is a notice to the Department of Healthcare Services. Anytime that someone dies in California, 
the Department of Healthcare Services will get a notice. And the purpose of this is if the decedent had received Medi-Cal at any point during their lifetime, the Department of Healthcare Services wants the opportunity to be reimbursed for that. So if the decedent did not receive Medi-Cal at any point, usually the department will just send a letter back saying everything's fine, but you do still need to send this notice regardless. Yeah, and if you don't know with 100% certainty, in some cases, whether your decedent was on Medi-Cal or not. For us as lawyers, for representing the trustee, we also are required to provide that notice. And there's no way that we know, you know, because we maybe never met the decedent. How would we know if he or she was on Medi-Cal? So we always do it and the trustee should be doing it. So that's always a a fun thing to tell them. You didn't do that. (laughs) And again, that's a four month waiting period because you send out the notice and Department of Healthcare Services has four months to reply. So better to do that at the beginning. The last one I'm going to talk about, the last one is uh, the change in ownership statement, which is a notice that we have to send to the assessor's office if the decedent owned real estate in the county. And it just lets them know, hey, somebody who owned real estate has died. And, you know, the assessor is always looking for an opportunity to increase the assessment, raise the property taxes. And so on that change in ownership statement, we let them know, no, there's an exception that applies here. or you know, maybe you are going to get to reassess, but you're required to give that notice. And a lot of times people don't do that. So that's our final bit of notices that have to be sent. And Jessica, what would you say is kind of your big takeaway from this episode? I'd say that the most important thing is to ask these questions sooner rather than later. If you have an attorney that you're working with, meet with them early in the trust administration. If you don't have one, we recommend that you meet with one just so you make sure you're doing all these things earlier instead of, you know, you think you're almost done and find out, oh, this, you know, four month waiting period is going to start now. <laughs> right. You're going to end up, if you're smart, getting at least some legal advice. Do it early, not at the end. That, I think that's a perfect takeaway. All right. Well, thank you all for listening and watching. Thank you, Jessica, as always. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources, including our eBooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show. But if not, don't worry. You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at absolutetrustcouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon. This podcast is not meant to take place of legal advice from an attorney and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you do have a legal question or issue, please consult with an attorney.